Hey friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV and welcome to another episode of The Face Off. On this episode, we've got two recent test drives I've done and I've put them together so we can compare those two trucks side by side. What they are, the 2017 Nissan Titan Crew Cab, an SL, and I've also got a 2016 Ford F-150 Crew Cab, a Lariat. Now, two different years, but the trim levels are virtually identical. So let's check it out. Before we get out on the test drive, I want to talk about styling just a little bit because we have done a number of videos on the Titan. I've read a lot of comments and the first thing that really comes up is a lot of people think this looks just like a Ford F-150 and I got to be honest with you folks, I don't see it here. Now I understand you got a couple little details that sort of mimic the last generation F-150 but as far as the current trucks, this looks nothing like it, I think. Now this one is the SL, so we've got a lot of chrome going on. It has the tow package, so we've got tow hooks there, even with the two-wheel drive. Nice headlights with LED light-ups in them. They're very fancy for a truck. And the wheels on this one, standard 20 inches when you get the SL trim grade. Also, down below on the SL trim grade, you've got running boards that are standard. Now these are very cool running boards because they've got rubber grips here and I'm wearing boots most of the time, leather soles, and so they're not going to slip on that when they're wet. Always a good thing. Also this one in this trim grade has a power sliding rear window which is a very nice feature. I always like the cargo box back here. As I said, five and a half feet comes standard with a spray on bed liner and this one also has the Utila track system here. It has tracks and it's got cleats so it really enables you to tie just about anything down in here and move those cleats around so you can really get it tied down tight. Also a 120 volt outlet which really makes it great if you do a lot of camping or you do tailgating that kind of thing. You can plug just about anything in. When we look at the styling on the Lariat, one of the things that really comes to fore is the fact that it's got a ton of chrome. The bumper, the hooks down there below, and the grill here, one of the many grills you can get on the F-150, and they all vary by the trim you choose. Fog lights on this one, those are halogen. Some very nice decorative headlights here as well, and they do have LED light-up signatures in them. Down here, the wheels on this, chrome 18-inch wheels, and of course with the F-150, there's a lot of different wheel choices, either by trim grade or within the trim grade, there's other options options as well. This one has a really nice set of running boards on it, full length, they're chrome, they're very sturdy, you can get on them and really put some weight on them. And the best part is they've got rubber grips down there, so like me, I'm wearing leather boots with leather soles, I can step on those things even when they're wet and not worry about slipping off. Up here, you've got You've got that touchpad that Ford's had dating back to the 70s. They still stick with that. They must have really got a good patent on that. Back here you can see this has a power sliding rear window, which while well, finding the switch for it's pretty darn hard, it's a nice touch, especially if you're driving on a day when it's not blistering hot like it is now. This has a five and a half foot bed on it. You can get the six and a half foot bed with the big cab. Some of the brands out there don't give you that flexibility. Toyota Tundra is one of them. This does have a lot of nice creature comforts. We've got leather seats here. They've got tan stitching, so there's a little bit of a highlight. That tan stitching also flows up here into the top of the dash panel, which has a premium, sort of a soft touch look to it. There's wood grain trim in here. Not trying to be real at all. Nissan doesn't really do wood grain all that well, in my opinion. It, it looks like shelf paper to be honest. This power seat here, very comfortable. Passenger also has power in this trim grade, but here I do have memory settings, which also apply to the power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Looking ahead from here, I've got a big gauge cluster, traditional with two dials in the center of screen that I can adjust and add a number of different things to it, customize that viewpoint. There's a lot of storage in here I need to point out. Down below here in the console, you've got a huge bin perfect for your phone and two or three other phones, a lot of other stuff down there. There's cup holders, you can adjust the location of that. So there's plenty of spaces for all your stuff, especially down in here. There's a tray, a lot of space down here in the center console. And down here, there's also map pockets in the center console in addition to the doors, which also have cup holders. So there's a ton of storage up here. Sitting inside the F-150, this one's very nice when it comes to equipment level. There's leather seats, they're heated and ventilated up front, and there's heated seats in the back. The trim level, there's wood grain trim, a lot of chrome, it's got all the devices you could ever want here in the center stack, and it's pretty well laid out. Now sitting here, 
The view out is very much pickup truck. You can see just a little bit of the hood and the steering wheel and the controls on it, everything again within easy reach. These seats are comfortable. Now I do have power seats here and the passenger has power seats. This does have memory and it was pretty easy to find a comfortable place. It does have a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel on this trim grade. Uh, it is manual on the lower trim grades. One thing I like about this is there's a lot of storage. This has an absolutely huge area down here. There's enough room for like two gallons, almost three gallons of water down there. And there's a place down here for your phone. There's actually room for a couple of phones down there and ports for everything you can imagine. There's just lots of space. And down here on the side of the console, on both sides, there's pockets down there that you can put a lot of stuff in. And that glove box is positively huge. Just like the last time I was back here in the crew cab, a couple things I want to point out is that there's a lot of space, obviously. Big truck, a lot of headroom. These seats are halfway forward, halfway back. So they could come back quite a ways if there was a really big guy up there, and I'd still be fine when it comes to leg room. The seat cushion is a little bit on the low side, and it's actually a little bit short here too, as you can see. If, if it were up high, it wouldn't be coming all the way out here to my shins. But if I were a smaller, shorter person, shorter legs, not a big deal. A lot of amenities back here. You've got air vents down there and a 120 volt outlet. Very cool if somebody has a laptop back here. Something like that. These seats, they fold down in two different ways. 60-40 split. The seat backs can fold down and give you a nice flat load deck up high. The other thing you can do is fold the lower cushion upward and that gives you one of two things. You can fold out a deck and have a nice flat, perfectly flat load deck down low for boxes, cargo, camping gear, whatever it might be. And the other thing is there's a nice full length storage area down there. As you can see there, there's a little bit of a cutout. And what that's for, long items like, for instance, a rifle. If you're a farmer, a hunter, a rifle can fit down there, even if it's in a soft case. And look, I've read the comments when I've said the word gun before. I'm not a gun nut. I don't own a gun. I'm not doing product placement for the NRA. I'm just mentioning the fact that's what that's for. You can actually store a gun down there, a rifle, if you have one. As you can see back here in the rear compartment, there's plenty of space, as you'd expect here with the big four-door cab. These seats here, they're about halfway forward, halfway back, and they could come back a long ways, and I'd still be fine. The one complaint I do have back here is the fact that the seating position, as you can see, it's pretty darn low. My knees are perched up, and it's really not going to be comfortable for a long trip. And honestly, I don't understand why it's not taller because there's enough headroom here. This seat could come up another couple, two or three inches and fix that problem and still offer plenty of headroom for most folks. But I understand what the engineers would say. The seat needs to fold and offer that functionality and that probably is what is at work here. Now there are a lot of amenities back here. As I mentioned, there's heated seats on this trim grade. There are vents back here, a big deal here in Arizona when, when it's 108 degrees outside. I really do like that. There is a fold down arm rest and it has cup holders. There's also cup holders at the back of the console and there's ports there too for both the 110 and 12 volt. For 2017, this comes with a 5.6 liter V8 engine. It's the same size as last year's engine, but it's been completely redesigned inside and out. New heads, a new intake system, direct fuel injection. It now makes 390 horsepower and 394 pound-feet of torque. Also new is a seven-speed automatic transmission. So all in, it promises better fuel economy as well as better drivability and more towing capability. Now, V6 will be along a little bit later in the model year. Specs haven't been announced yet. And before we get out driving, if you want to learn more about this engine, we have a complete video on its build, its specs, the underhood tour, as well as a tour of the plant where they make it. You can see that by clicking on the link down below. Now, let's get to driving. First question I always like to answer is how does it go? Well, it's got a nice little push in the back. Nice sound. Very nice sound, in fact. And well more than 60. I was supposed to click off 60 miles an hour there, but I got a little past it. Sorry. So it's got a nice quick, well, nice quick temper to it. I like it. Now, this transmission, most of the time, it actually shifts very well. If you're going around town, if you really put your foot in it, it drops down and gets you right where you want to be. I will point out that a few times I've noticed it sort of hesitates. Its, its coordination isn't quite polished as it could be. Now, fuel economy, in my week with it, I got 15.5 mpg. 
Now it's rated at 18 MPG combined and while most of my driving was city about two thirds to one third highway, it is slightly less. Now this one, 5 liter V8, 385 horsepower and 387 pound feet of torque. And in this truck, that makes it the mid-level option because that 3.5 V6, even though it has less horsepower, it has a lot more torque at 420 pound-feet. And for 2017, it's going to have even more at 470. So um, mid-range, that's where this is at. Now, this does come with a six-speed automatic transmission available both two- and four-wheel drive. And here, we've got four-wheel drive. So the big question with this 5-liter V8 is, how does it go? Now that's what I'm talking about. Nice V8 growl. That's what it does. Now the EcoBoost, yeah, it's a little bit faster. It has more kick in the back, but this, this has got that nice V8 rumble that really makes it feel like a good old fashioned American pickup. And it's got pickup. Not the fastest of the bunch, but it's got plenty of speed going on. The EPA rates this engine at up to 21 MPG highway and 17 MPG combined. That's what the EPA sticker says on this truck. And before I started fooling around here during my week with it on the highway and in town, I actually got 17, which puts it pretty much middle of the class for MPG, but it's as promised, which is always a good thing. When it comes to handling character, the first comparison I want to make is to the XD because that's what I've spent a lot of time in. This truck being the half ton, lighter frame, the truck itself is a lot lighter, well, it feels lighter. And with these 20 inch wheels, a lot more sporting. It doesn't feel quite as heavy when you throw it into a curve. And the steering feel is good too because it's still hydraulic steering, unlike a lot of trucks which have gone to the electric power steering, which typically has less feel. And so it's a nice handling truck. The ride is tuned stiff enough that you don't get float. It just really corners nicely. And a lot of that goes to the enhancements they've made to this chassis over the last Titan. Out here on the desert washboard road where even some of the best vehicles in the world can feel like a complete pile, the refinement of this chassis continues to impress me. It feels very rubbery and isolated from that rhythmic vibration of the washboard surface over some of these bumps. Even when I hit those hard ones, it seems to absorb them pretty good, even though it's got 20 inch wheels, which is pretty impressive, I think. I am noticing out here on the rougher stuff, bumps, ruts, things like that, I am getting some rattle and shudder in the front end here. And it's, it's not something I feel in the steering, so it's not really something I'm going to attribute to the suspension. It really sounds to me more like it's a uh, body structure, something like the radiator support or uh, some of the trim up front there with the body structure. The chassis itself, very solid. I am hitting the bump stops on some of these rougher bumps, but it's it's not a harsh thing. It's actually, it's pretty nice and rubbery. It's actually handling quite well. The maneuverability out here, very good because the steering feels good. So I'm pretty impressed. One of the concerns a lot of people had, including myself, when I heard that they were gonna make this new body structure out of aluminum and save a lot of weight was, is it going to feel flimsy? Is it going to feel like a tin can? And I'm glad to say that's not the case at all. This is just as strong a structure as the old steel one. And of course, the steel frame below is still steel. And it's actually stronger than before. It's a lot stiffer. It's made of high strength steel. So this truck doesn't feel any less solid than it ever did before. It still has a nice quiet ride out here on the pavement. I'm on a road here that has pretty noisy pavement. As you can tell, it's pretty quiet inside. And when it comes to cornering, well, that lighter weight actually makes it feel a little bit more sporting. So they've done a good job overall by lightening the load, but not making it feel like it's less truck. This is a desert washboard road. I bring all trucks, all SUVs out here because this vibrating rib surface can really make even some of the best vehicles out there feel like a complete pile. What I'm finding out here is that this is a vast improvement over the Super Cab F-150 I drove out here just last year. In fact, the level of isolation and quiet and overall solidness this chassis has with this particular truck is right up there with the Toyota Tundra, which has been one of the best I've driven out here. Out here on a little bit tighter, bumpier, more challenging trail, not hardcore off-roading. This is just kind of uh, the equivalent to a, a farm road, at least a desert farm road with rocks. 
it's a good place to find out how the suspension absorbs the rougher stuff and how well it rides and how the steering works how agile it is out here and i'm pretty impressed i gotta tell you not only is this electric power steering giving a nice light feel out here but i'm not getting any kickback in the steering over the big bumps and whatnot so it's just very well refined and it feels very maneuverable and the other thing is is this basic suspension that's on this is doing a pretty good job of absorbing the rough stuff and this isn't the off-road suspension this is the basic thing well i think these trucks are actually pretty darn closely matched and when you look at just the trim grades they almost have exactly the same equipment the nissan did have a couple of things standard that the ford doesn't and vice versa, the Ford also had a few things that the Nissan doesn't or doesn't even offer. Now, when it came to actual MSRP, $55,000 for the Ford and $48,000 for the Nissan. But in fairness, the Ford was a 4x4 and it had quite a few options on it. Nissan had one or two options on it, but if you strip all that off and look at dead nuts comparison, pricing's just about the same. Where these trucks really set themselves apart, I think, it was fuel economy. 15 and a half MPG with the Nissan, 17 with that Ford. Now, when it comes to what they were shown on the window sticker, it's almost about the same difference. And that really goes to the weight. The Ford, about 650 pounds lighter because of its aluminum body, and that's with the four-wheel drive. Had it been a two-wheel drive, almost 900 pounds lighter. So that really goes to the overall fuel economy difference I think you see there. Even though it does have more power than Nissan, when it comes to power to weight ratio, they're almost pushing the amount, same weight out there. So performance, how they drive, that's something you need to decide if you go out and drive them. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Now, if you want to see a more detailed review on either one of these trucks, click on the links down below in the information section. We've got full test drives down there. Also, if you like the face-off, there should be a flag up there about right now and also a link down there for our face-off playlist. Lots of them out there. Also, one last thing, click on the big red link right here and subscribe to the YouTube channel because we do test drive one or two vehicles a week, plus a lot of trucks, and we have a video just like this almost every other day. There's always something new, so stay tuned.